Okay, yes, good. Um, iPad up, Cody, is the iPad working? Is it? Okay, I can, that's, that's good, okay. All right, uh, would you just for a moment have a, a prayer for the class with me? Shay, good to see you. Well, wow. are you ordained yet? No. Have you talked to your overseeing pastor about that? <laughs> he, he refuses to talk to you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So, <clears throat> Lord Jesus, we pray you would use this time to minister to our hearts. We need help in life, and you are a, a willing a willing and good shepherd to care for us. Our hearts are so important in life and they are so unstable and unwise. We need your guidance, wisdom, filling of the Spirit. Bless these uh, scriptures to our hearts. In Christ's name, amen. Okay, let's start the class. Like, uh, Corinne is here from Paris. Did I get your name right, Corinne? Okay. Let's see who else is new here. Uh, Chris is here from out west. Let's see. Uh, oh, Susie is here from India. Amazing. And Addie. Did I meet you in India? Oh, yeah. Are you related? No. Relative? No. Okay. Addie, good to see you. And who else do we have here? Somebody getting married. Carter Elliott's getting married in a few weeks. That's good. This gentleman here, which? Yeah. Uh, Bruce. Bruce, okay. Welcome, Bruce, here. Great to have you. Silver Spring, Silver Spring. great. Um, okay, so the subject is the heart. This is heart care, our heart. So there'll be some words on the subject and scripture and teaching on that subject today. So we'll start by you turning to your neighbor who is sitting next to you. That's what I mean by neighbor. He yeah, is the person sitting next to you. And tell them everything you know about the heart. You have about a minute and a half. Okay, uh, turn. 
We'll look at verses on Judges chapter 5. <clears throat> Judges 5 and the searching of heart. I like that text there. Chapter 5 and verse, uh, is it 12? No, wait a minute. <clears throat> Verse 9, my heart is toward thee. I'm looking for the searchings of heart. Great searchings of heart. 15, is it? Yeah. For the divisions of Reuben, there were great thoughts of heart. Verse 16. Why about it, abodest thou among the sheepfolds to hear the bleedings of the fox? For the divisions of Reuben, there were great searchings of heart. <clears throat> you all know what it's like for, for your heart to be tested, for you to search your heart. The heart of man who can know it, it's desperately wicked. In Jeremiah 17, our heart is tender when we are young. First Kings chapter 3, Solomon had a tender heart. He asked a good, he, he made a good request to God. Uh, First Kings uh, 3, let's read it. What he didn't ask for speaks almost as much as what he did ask for. In First Kings 3. Verse uh, 7, no, 6. Solomon said, You have showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before you in truth and in righteousness and uprightness of heart with thee, and thou hast kept for him this great kindness that you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which you have chosen a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Uh, this is a beautiful prayer because you can see his humility and his need and his responsibility. He is saying, I have a big responsibility and I take it to heart. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart, verse 9, to judge thy people. Help me have the right heart so I don't mess it up, that I don't hurt people. That's a very good uh, principle as we think about the heart today and guard our hearts because of how bad they can be and how we can hurt people. Yeah, we hurt ourselves, we hurt people, we hurt people around us because of our hearts and how our hearts can go uh, south, okay? Verse uh, 9 that I may discern between good and bad. Another point, that I might discern, recognize good and bad. That's one thing the heart, by the way, in Bible psychology, we have these words. Um, we have spirit, we have the word soul, we have the word heart, we have a mind, we have five things the mind does. Uh, we are thinking, I'll mention the five, thinking, understanding, knowing, remembering, and imagining. We have the mind, we have emotions, and this we describe, define in psychology as high quality emotions and low quality emotions. So that's another. High quality emotions are our love, joy, peace. Uh, there's um, there's a kind of quietness that's an emotion, 
to have peace is an emotion, to be contented and satisfied. It ha it's connected with thought. So we have thoughts and high quality emotions. If the thoughts are high quality thoughts, it brings you into peace. So the effect of righteousness is peace. So that's where our peace comes from. It's from our, our thinking with God, high quality thoughts from God meditation, which is motive, motored or engine, um, you could say motored or moved by the spirit. The spirit is the deepest part of you. That's the deepest part, the spirit of a man, 1 Corinthians 2.11. But all of this is to say, and then you have your will. So we have will. But we could take the soul and the parts of the soul and bring it in subjection to our subject today, which is the heart. This is just a few comments, just to let you know that we have a wide, wide vocabulary of the immaterial part of man you know, wide vocabulary. These are words that are in the Bible. So why would God, why wouldn't God use one word for all of that? Because they are different functions. Why wouldn't he just say we all have an immaterial part and call it one word, like soul? You all have a soul. Because there are different functions of our immaterial being. Just like I compare it in my body, my body is made of fat and protein, okay? Cholesterol, protein, amino acids. And one function is lung. So you have lungs made out of mat material of amino acids and um, cholesterol and other fats and so on. But a lung is different from a stomach, but they're both material. So they're both material, but the functions are different. Lungs don't digest food, stomach does. So I just say that to say that uh, even though, like some people like to think, well, when I die, my body goes to the ground and then my soul goes to God. You, we can say that, the Bible says that. But we also have the Bible saying that the spirit goes to God. You know, we can also say the heart, you know, we, we, the heart, me, Tom, I go to God. We can say soul, but we can use heart. So, um, I, this subject is about the heart, and, and this is a very um, important part of our being. So we have this, the, the king saying, and he's young, and also tender. I like that word, tender. And it's about a king at the end of um, Second Kings, and uh, it's in Second Kings 22. There was a king who was also tender-hearted, and he had a heart for God. And and God said to him, "The disaster is coming to Israel." And the king was tender-hearted and young. And, and he was praying, and the Lord said, well, I'm not going to do it while you're alive because you are this way, because you are tender-hearted, because there's something about your heart that I, as God, I enjoy your heart, your heart for me, your heart for truth. Many of the Psalms, let's say, put here heart, um, if you want to look at this word in your concordance, and there's, I think, uh, 600 words, and 600 times in the Old Testament we have the word heart. I think 130 times in the New Testament we have the word heart. So more than 700 times we have the word heart in our Bible. And this is what our study is today. So we have... Uh, Solomon here um, saying a beautiful prayer. And in it you see his heart for the people. You see his humility. And you see actually 
wisdom in saying, I don't know how to discern in cases where I have to make judgments. I, I need your help. I need you to do that. So the speech pleased the Lord, verse 10, that Solomon had asked this thing. So this is the Psalms. If you take your concordance and just read, look up the word heart, and you can <clears throat> see how many times um, this word is used. I like Psalm 30, 73 as an example of him saying in his heart, I have cleansed my hands in vain. I've been a believer, but it hasn't meant much. Or I have, I have followed the Lord in vain. I said it in my heart. And, and this is one of our, our less lessons today, is uh, the heart going wrong, and then our heart being um, new. This is our typical diagram of a heart with a hole in it. Why is a hole in the heart? Because of the fall of man. We have an old sin nature. We have a heart that is deceitful, desperately wicked, Jeremiah 17. Five to nine. Incredible description of the heart that does not trust the Lord in that text. Uh, so I said in my heart, you know, I have read the Bible, but it hasn't mu meant much to me. I've gone to church, but it hasn't resulted in good. It, it wasn't what I thought it would be. I said in my heart, you know, I believe in God, but, and on it goes. This is a, a amazing, um, amazing thing to think about. And I want to do three imagined scenarios on that subject in a few minutes. Actually, I could do it now. My mother is dying. God, you better not take my mother. If my mother dies, God... I'm going to be very angry with you, I say in my heart. Okay, Have you ever said that kind of thing in your heart about some, any number of things? God, if you take away that thing that's precious to me, if I don't get the job I want, if I don't get married, if I don't have a child, if, and then just have, imagine, and what you say, what we can say in our hearts. So we were soul winning last night in Have a Grace, and this woman said this to us. She said, um, my mother is very close to me, and I said for years, Lord, you better not take her, because if you take her, I'll be very angry with you. So she said that in her heart. Then her mother died. And then she was spirit-filled, and she was shocked. I don't, hey, I'm not angry with God. I have peace with God. Thank you, God. You did that. Thank you. Okay. Um, what happened to that woman? Why did that happen? What happened to her? God gave her grace. Maybe God knew. Maybe she was saying a prayer. I don't want to be angry with you. Whatever happens in my life, I don't want to be angry with you. I want to be able to trust you. And God gave her the grace for that. What is that heart that is not angry with God is that new heart, um, the spirit-filled heart in Psalm 73, when it says, I, my foot almost slipped, but I went into the sanctuary of God, and I understood. Okay, this is a, a big word with regards to our hearts. I understood. What did you understand? I understood that wicked people are standing on slippery ground, that they don't really have it all together. I understood that they're only a little bit f so close to a collapse. 
And I understood that God is for me and that he's given me a new heart and I have fellowship with him. But I can also, li I can also live in my old sin nature. And so that's the, that's one lesson for us today. Okay. So could you talk to your neighbor about that? Have you ever, have you ever said in your heart, let's say it this way, my heart is hard, okay? And what do you say? Give, give to like three things that you could say from a hard heart. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody have one, a short one? Anybody have one? What were you talking about? <laughs> yes. A lack of what? Forgiveness? Okay. I'm sorry because I can't. I'm sure my ears are not good. Forgiveness. Yeah, a lack of bitterness, a lack of forgiveness. In my heart, yes, Scott. Disappointment in the plan. Disappointment in the plan. Yeah. Self pity. Self pity. Wow. Cody? Mad about what? Uh, mad about situations? Okay. Mm hmm. Broken, broken relationships, uh, losing a job, all of these things that hurt us. And then, then the process of, uh, of how I relate to it, how I walk with God. If I walk before people, people feed the old man, the old heart. And my old heart, my, the, the sin nature I have in my heart, I harbor, I can grudges, um, you know, I can easily grow bitterness in my garden, which is my heart. 
and really, really have trouble and produce more trouble and more trouble. And, um, and Solomon, what he didn't pray for in, in, that te in that portion was, you can tell me, you remember, you didn't pray for your enemies to be destroyed, right? You didn't pray for money, right? Gold or silver. And what was the other thing? Long life. You didn't pray for a long life. Why wouldn't you pray for these three things? Will your enemies be destroyed, right? The, the heart of man could say, I want my enemies destroyed because that will protect me. I want to have money because then, you know, that's for me. And then long life, that's for me. So what he didn't pray for is almost as instructive as what he did pray for, which was like, there are people, there are a lot of people that need, they need right guidance. They need, if I'm going to be the king, they will need help. I need discernment. Give me wisdom. And the Lord is saying, this is the heart. This is the heart that changes your life and the people around you. But the fallen nature of man not only destroys me, but it destroys the people around. Well, destroy is too strong of a word. It just doesn't benefit them. It's not what they could have had if there was a new heart in it, a new heart in life, new heart in relationships with people. So I go back to the new heart all the time. So well, just to say that this picture is a story of my life. I go back to the old nature. I go back to it automatically. I live in the old sin nature. And it's about me. And I can find my heart getting hard. I get hard. And there's three um, ways, I think, we could say. The heart is getting hard. And um, we have, uh, let's see, my mind and the darkness that is in my mind. That's Ephesians 4.18. Um, then my words get hard, or I use words um, as tools from my hard heart. Words uh, that are not love. They may be love on, on the surface. I love you, but it's not in my heart. That's Proverbs 23. Remember when you sit down with the ruler, with the ruler to a banquet? Consider what is before you. Because even though the, the food looks good and you're sitting at a king's table, but consider what is before you because his heart is not with you. He is an enemy. So as a man thinks in his heart, so is he referring to the king that you're sitting with. So be careful because you can be bought with a sandwich. You know, you can be influenced by a good conversation, but his heart is not with you. So that's a, and then the, then my hard heart is seen in my actions. My mind, and my words and my actions, what I do, how I spend my time, where I go, who do I talk to, who do I hang out with. My mother would also always say when I was in school, like, careful who your friends are. Who are your friends? She'd like to know who my friends were, right? So, all right, it's true. Um, so, Let's see. The key now, this last part is so, I think it's amazing. It's about David. If we go to David, who's the example of a man who had a heart after God, <clears throat> uh, I've, I've wrote down these Psalms 4 4. You can find these in your concordance. 
Psalm 7, 10, 9, 1, Psalm 10, verse 6, 11, verse 2, 15, verse 2. God requires truth in the, in the inner part, in our heart, in 15, 6, 16, 9, about gladness and joy coming from the heart. Um, 17, 3, 19, 8, 19, 14, 31, 24, 32, verse 11. You can go on and on. There are many of them, scores of verses in the Psalms about our heart, how valuable they are. Look at Proverbs 4, 20, 20. It's a standard text for the subject. My son, attend to my words, incline thine heart, ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. My words, keep them in the midst of your heart. Let the words test you and check you and search you and see if there be any evil way in you. I got a good idea in my mind about finding somebody's heart. Have you ever worked with metal? Maybe, I don't know, maybe with cars, metal that's rusted or metal that's dirty, painted. And if you take a grinder and you grind that metal, you can find the real metal, the good metal, because it's rusty or worn or very dirty. So you go through layers of dirt, you go through paint, and then you find the shiny metal. Okay, you know what I'm saying, I think. I think of that about us, like there, there, there is the spirit in a man, and that's really who you are, what spirit you are of. Like the, the spirit, our blessing is we have the spirit of God. And the Bible says that, we, that he is the father of spirits. And that when we go to heaven, we will be with the spirits of just men made perfect. And God is spirit. I mean, life is spirit. That's what it really is. And when you go to people, you go through the dirt and the paint and everything, and finally you get to that shiny metal. And that's where you want to live. And that's where, how you want to know people. You want to know people that way, and that's what we know, because the Spirit of God dwells in us, and we are filled with the Spirit. So we are anointed of God. We have the Spirit of God, and it affects our hearts, because there were two things when you got saved that were given to you. What were the two things that were given to you? Yes, I will give you a new what? Hard and what? A new what? New spirit. Why are they together? Because this is really who you are. This is the shiny metal. Now, how do you get to the shiny metal? How does God get to the shiny metal? It says in Hebrews 4.12, the word of God is quick, powerful, sharp, and is a discerner of our thoughts and intentions. It goes there. That's where God goes. Like to you. Like in your heart. That's where we have to live. And we're very good at living on the surface of things. You know. That's the subject today. Like to take care of my heart is a lot of my life. Because I lie. Because I cheat, because I fool, because I deceive. Wasn't Jacob a deceiver? Huh? You know, the Jews as a race of people, the Jews are successful people. But also, like everybody, we can deceive and cheat. And Jacob was good at it. And God set, showed that. Because he wants to say to the human race, that's who you are, but I will still work with you. I will still give you grace. I will still guide you in truth. Can you imagine taking deceitful people and guiding them in the truth? <laughs> it's like crazy. Like, how could that happen? 
That is what he does. That's what he does. That's amazing. You know? How many men have ruined their wives because they cheated on their wife? And the men that have cheated and lied and deceived, and it goes the other way too, and ruining something that's so precious. Why? Because the heart is deceitful, desperately wicked. Okay, go to Proverbs 4, verse 21. Let them not depart from your eyes. They are life unto those that find them, health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, verse 23, for out of it are the issues of life. Now the last lesson. Guarding your heart, out of it are the issues of life. 1 Samuel, turn with me to 1 Samuel 24. Please. Verse 4. The men of David said unto him, Behold the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemies unto the, into thine hand, and that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good unto thee. Now, isn't it fun, funny that you've got your men standing around you God has answered your prayer. Your enemies are delivered in your hand. You could take out King Saul. You could kill him. It's an answer to prayer, David. It's an answer to prayer. This is an answer to prayer. You can kill Saul. You can take him out. Your enemies are delivered in your hand from God. God delivered the, these. You know, God gave you the money. God you know, God did this to you. But David's, David's more, like, sensitive. But still, look at verse um, uh, 4. David arose, cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privily. And it came to pass afterward that David's heart smote him because he'd cut off Saul's skirt. Let's write that down. His heart. What, what would be another way of saying this? His conscience, it bothered him. It, it, it was, he didn't feel right about it. Like, what are some of the words we say as Christians? My heart smote me would be what? I don't feel right about it. Bothers my conscience. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that. What, what function was that in his psyche? That was a function of his heart. His heart alarmed him. It moved him. It, 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 he was sensitive. Was it spiritual? Was it the Holy Spirit that did that in him? Was it like in his mind, in his heart? Was it only where he was living? Because his men didn't, didn't think that way. Like his men were more like, you can kill him. God answered prayer, kill him. But as he just did, he did, did a modified version of offending the king or showing him his authority, it still didn't fit, sit right with David. So he was self-corrected, wasn't he? Does your heart correct you? Are we to guard it because it is a powerful part of life? That it can become hard or deceitful in Hebrews 3. That it can trick me. How many, how many men of God climb the ladder of spiritual success and then in a place of privilege betrayed their office or their people? They, you know, how many of us, let's say all of us, understand this? Because it's the heart of man. How I can counsel myself contrary to God and even have people around me that are reinforcing that idea. This is pretty incredible. But this isn't the lesson. This is part of the lesson. I want you to see something. He goes, I'll put here like this, sensitive heart, David, hard heart, with Bathsheba and murder, Uriah, 
he couldn't even talk to David about the, the sin of, bat, with, of adultery. Why didn't his heart smite him when he committed adultery? Why didn't he get out of bed and just go before God and repent and say, I can't believe I did that. That's a shame. That's a violation. That Why didn't his heart do that? You know, isn't it a good question? Now, who knows the answer? I mean, it's, who can know it? Jeremiah 17. Who can know it, right? Then, then, sensitive again, and this is at the end of his life. I, I saw it today when I was like, preparing for this, is Second Samuel. Uh, turn there to 24, Second Samuel uh, 23 and 24. 23. The three men went and got water out of the out of the well of Bethlehem. David took the water. What did he do? He poured it out unto the Lord. In verse sixteen, twenty three, sixteen. Why didn't he drink the water? Because in his heart he processed it. He processed the whole thing a certain way, you know. And that's the thing that we have to, you guys are good. I, I, I think that I'm in the midst of incredible people who do this. They are processing life a certain way through the new heart. And their eyes are open and they are alert to the good things around them. Somebody got me water from the well. Of, I mean, three guys got me water from the well of Bethlehem. Really? You know? I mean, really, you were doing, really, that's who, that's in your heart? That heart connects with David's heart. David is alive, and he's alerted to this service and this work, and he just has a certain attitude about it. How can you go from being sensitive and self-correcting to being hard and killing your friend and then go back to being a man after God's own heart, right? Go to 2 Samuel 24, and uh, he numbers Israel, chapter 24, verse 1. Again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them to say, Go number Israel and Judah. So he numbered Israel and Judah, and then go down to verse 10, 24 10. And David's heart smote him after he had numbered the people. There we go. Is this why they, God loved David? Is this why he loved him? Because somehow he was able to keep himself like that. Isn't that beautiful? And is this what our calling is as people? Like to have that kind of uh, love and that heart and that spirit come out of us? How, can it happen all your life? Yeah, because the, the key here is the natural man, I, I do not know about how life goes, but if you say, you, if this is the hard heart and this is the soft heart, usually in your life when you start, let's say in your, you're whatever, eight years old, and you just have a tender heart, and then in time, life takes a toll. And you learn to sin, you learn to excuse yourself, you learn to rationalize, you get tough, you learn to fight, you, you learn to defend, you learn to lie and cheat, you learn to deflect. It wasn't my fault, it was his fault. And, and, and the older people get, often, I don't know how it is exactly, but often the hard heart happens. And I would say, um, I, would, I would say that the great blessing in your life is that that does not happen. 
that you have all your life somewhere here, you have the heart of God. And your heart smites you sometimes. And you get corrected. And you go to church, you subject yourself to the word of God that does this. Because to get to the shiny metal is a function of grace that works by the word and the spirit, which is a result of our new heart. That's why we want to be here, and that's why this great grace is happening to all believers everywhere at all times. It happened to David, right? So that's it. Okay? Amen. All those with the...